Are you ready? I can't believe this is happening. It's a little nerve wracking. Yeah. We have been dreaming about being back in the water since the time we hauled out. Well over six long months ago now. Our mini refit turned into a major refit, and then I was diagnosed with breast cancer in the middle of it. So to say it feels like forever since Calico Skies was last floating is a massive understatement. Tomorrow morning, at dead high tide, Calico Skies will move from her spot in the boatyard, across the road, and over to the water's edge, where she will be lowered 15 feet down until her keel is submerged and her hull is floating. Until then, it'll be a waiting game, and all we can do is try to remain calm. So we're going up now. It's kind of hard to see because it's going really slowly, but this whole shebang is moving up to get in place. and excited right now. Same, same. <laughs> Honestly, I don't think we're going to be excited until tomorrow after we get to the marina. Yes. <laughs> Engine starts, no water coming in. Tied up safely. Uh, yeah. Oh, we're lined up. We're lined up. <laughs> so crazy. This is like the longest we've ever been out of the water, probably ever. I would say I mean, ever, definitely yeah. ever since we've I guess we had some winters, but I don't oh, think it was yeah. ever nine months. True, true. We got the dinghy up late last night. I wanted to film it, but it was dark by the time we did it. We were at the boat till after nine last night, just doing stuff to get ready. Today's task is to move Calico Skies from the skateboard to the travel lift, which is too large to squeeze in between the other boats. Then Calico will be lifted up high enough for us to reach her centerboard when fully lowered an additional four feet below the keel. This board is used going upwind to help keep the boat from slipping sideways, and until now, we haven't had access to paint it since it's been sitting in the centerboard trunk. Finally getting the sand centerboard. It's about, I don't know, about six o'clock. Not that much left. Uh, it's kind of organizing down below, trying to get access to the through holes, trying to make sure nothing will fall into the prop shaft, uh, etc. So I'm gonna go ahead and sand this last little bit and paint it now. I also have to touch up just around the through hole fittings. So I went ahead and kind of touched up all the areas I needed to. Um, so I hit the bottom part of the centerboard here. Um, I also needed to put a little more on the through holes. And this is our garbage drain. So it lets water out of the boat when it's in storage. Painted that up. I'm just kind of looking around the area for anything else I could touch up. But otherwise it looks pretty good. Got the prop speed on, some like crazy silicone to Zinx, because it might be in a marina more. Uh, trailing edge, leading edge has extra paint on it. The water line has extra paint. And in case you guys were wondering, this is what our center board looks like when it's down. You don't really get to see that angle too often. So our draft goes from four foot two to eight foot two. I mean, we're probably really drawing like closer to five, how much we raise the water line. But uh, yeah, some centerboard looks like. Well, big day is here and we're super excited and super nervous. We just pulled up. We'll just um, emptying something from the bourbon. So we just threw the rest of the stuff on and it's time to go. I didn't get it on film, but we'll just put the dock lines on. And we're gonna go in bow first, right? Yeah, I asked that. So that'll be a little windier than I would like it to be today. Uh, well, the reason we're going in at 10 a.m because that's high tide, dead high tide. Some uh, friends are here, <laughs> moral support. I don't know, are we? <laughs> you tell me. 
I guess we're floating. So we have a lot of through holes on this boat and we've touched almost all of them in the last that one looks okay. five months. So far so good. Okay. I checked, I think the engine was on. And now I depth center without reading on the Y. Really? Yeah, I know. That's I pretty strange. Yeah. That's new. Yeah. So Bill just said our depth sounder isn't reading. Which is weird. Which is weird. Hopefully fixable in the water. Okay, so this Since one's that's... okay. Okay. I'm just gonna prime it. Do you want to check the galley one first? That, those are already good. Oh, thank God. So uh, the galley one is um, one of the plastic ones. Yeah, there's one more plastic one I have to worry about. We have two plastic through hulls that did not get serviced, and then all the rest of them are bronze. So we're, we're we're a lot less worried about the bronze ones because those we left pretty loose, actually, is what the guidance is. Um, and we're going to tighten them if they're dripping because you don't want to over-tighten bronze through hulls. The plastic ones we didn't touch, and those are the ones that are potentially could be sun damaged. But first, I'm going to prime our seawater strainer and get the engine started. Okay. And we'll let her warm up. Long water. It's not like we're sailing over there. Come on, water flow. the through haul which we don't think it is but nothing nothing I can open up the raw water and see I can see there's water to pump I guess That's smart. all right stand by Maybe weird. that jammed it up, I'm not sure. I mean, this is the first time it... Yeah. I don't know. There's a piece of grease I found. Oh. Yes. <laughs> Everyone, fingers crossed. <laughs> So you think it was that grease? I think it was that grease, or I forgot that plate. Yeah. Could have been two things. Yeah, it's, it's doing good. How's it look? I can't tell. This is, this is water, eh? Is that the, what is that? Through hall. Shit. I can't tell if that's gonna like tighten up or... I mean, do you tighten transducers though? I mean, I could try sealing from up top, but I don't know what the right answer is. I don't know why it's leaking. I don't know if we should like try to fix it in the water, or, like just put some more sealant. I have no idea. I guess we should come out, eh? What? The depth, the depth transducer is leaking. Oh. The three bedded one, I don't know why. I think we probably gotta come out for that though. I, it's leaking like a drip, but it, you can't, I know, it's like a little trickle, but you can't. Yeah. I don't know. Oh. <laughs> so close. Well, everything else works. Do not want to film right now, but we just got lifted out of the water and we are headed back to the yard. So the good thing is everything works except for that one. Um, the bad thing is that it's going to be a bitch to fix it, uh, and I have a doctor's appointment that I have to be at in two days. Uh, yeah. Sorry, babe. It's okay. Hey, hey, hey. I, I 
it's leaking back here. I just don't know why. Like, it looks so well sealed. I know, this is like the one thing that we weren't worried about. No, like, but I guess I could feel like more water coming out right here. So this is the backing plate. And we're just getting off the old 5200. And we're gonna use 4200 just in case... The problem again. We've got a problem that we aren't aware of. Though that doesn't really make sense because we, we know the housing is leaking. The problem with these through holes is usually there's like a peg that lets you when you're tightening it, you could hold on to the housing, the mushroom. Uh, these don't have that. So I think it may have spun when we were screwing the, there's like a big lock nut that goes on top of the backing plate. I think we might have spun and moved, removed yeah, so some of the sealant. Yeah, so there's two people involved in like the installation, right? There's someone on the in the inside of the boat that is holding it and then there's someone on the outside and if it moves, it might, it could not get sealed, right? Yep. So the, the concern with doing it this way, although there's really no other way to remove it since it's been put in with 5200, uh, is that the housing could get damaged, um, you know, in there. That would be a worst case scenario because we would need new housing, which we would have to order. And that would mean that we wouldn't be going in the water anytime soon. So we're just trying to get off all the 5200 off the... Through hole? Yeah, and we're gonna do physical and then acetone. But, it's, you know, it's a lot of little grooves. I guess so. Uh, this brush is seeing better days. I think we should get another one. That's from like 2015. Okay. Okay. Since we can't even get a grip on this thing without uh, the little nub that you usually use, so Jack stand up a piece of wood that's now compressing the mushroom upward, and this will allow us to get proper tension uh, on the nut. the aftermath of that little fun morning. I'm a little afraid to celebrate yet until we know if this worked, but. I think I have a good feeling about um, it. I think the bottom line is for a transducer that has like a smooth contoured surface and no other way to hold it, but to hold that transducer flush to the hull, you you need like mechanical advantage. Yeah, I think like we probably spun our sealant out. Probably happen. Yeah, so um, it was one of the actually the workers here, Poncho, um, this idea to use the jack stand to get that leverage. And that was simple, but really smart. Um, and that's probably what we should have done the first time. Cause I mean, we're obviously not a hundred percent sure why it's leaking. There's always the chance that, I mean, it definitely cured. So yeah, I mean, that, that has to be it. That's the thing you do learn, like you hang up the boatyard guys, they do no tricks that we don't know. Like that's such a simple yeah. solution. Like there's no over engineering. And I they're guess just, to our credit, smart. we've never installed an, a transducer like that before. No, so I have a 50% success rate. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> well, we don't even know that yet. Well, that, that one's not me. So sorry. I'm sorry it's so close. My arms are so sore from filming for the last week because I didn't move for like a month after surgery. But we have to go up to Phoenix um, Tuesday. It's Saturday. We're just texting with the boat manager, yard manager, and hoping we can go in Monday morning. Uh... And yeah, it kind of has to go well. Otherwise, we're gonna be gone for a bit. So it is the next day, and we cleaned the boat all day and organized. Hopefully tomorrow it goes okay. Still a little nervous. Um, I kind of wish I had left the boat in a little bit longer. Just as, I, I don't know, I guess you feel pressure when you're sitting there in the slings, but you know, an extra 10 minutes might have helped just to see if any other leaks develop. Yeah, but I think you're just, that's yeah. Just like hindsight 2020. Yeah, I know. In the moment, it's so hard to like, you know, you're like rushing at the engine started. The whole thing's kind of a lot, but. Yeah. Um, I think we're in better shape. I think it's like more, less stressful tomorrow than it was at first, right? Yeah. We got the engine going. Like, most, we know most of the through holders are doing well, so. 
I'm kind of glad it was two days actually. It would have been a rush to do it in 24 hours. Yeah, Phil's talking about the um, doing the through haul, the painting, painting, and the it. disaster that was the boat. Because basically, we moved out of an apartment that we've been staying in for the last week and just dumped everything on the boat. And then the launch happened right after that. So it was just like a big pile and we spent the day today cleaning. So we needed the time. I mean, yeah. we would have spent the time in the marina doing the same thing, so. I think it's gonna get you back on board too, like reacclimated. Yeah, because my body is not, <laughs> I am not fit after. It's yeah. amazing how much a surgery took you down. That's one thing we didn't anticipate that your body loses its yeah. strength, I guess, from yeah. recovering from surgery. It's, it's longer than we thought it would be. Yeah, this week definitely kicked me into shape. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we got you moving again, that's good. <laughs> Okay, so I'm just going over my notes that I made for the first attempt of launching. This is the second time. <clears throat> so it was empty the lazarette, which we've done. We could see those through holes. They weren't leaking. I'm very suspicious now. Uh, got dock lines on. I turned the windlass on just in case we lose power. We could at least drop the hook. Uh, it's the same thing because that's been off for a while. That's right. Got our dock lines on. Our center board is up again. Um, and then once we get in the water, I want to make sure I forward reverse, which I had last time. But just make sure again. Uh, I have to prime the engine strainer to get that raw water through, mm -hmm. and then I gotta check all the through hulls again, which is 12 of them. Um, yeah, then the real problem is this forward, that forward one, so. Should we pick up the floorboard? <coughs> yeah. Oh my god, I know. So, is this little guy that was the problem, it's all resealed. See, this stuff freaks me out last time. See, it's like shininess. I think it's just silicone, though. I thought it was water. Wait, are you saying that it wasn't leaking? No, 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 no. for this one. I saw this and <laughs> oh, it, wasn't, it wasn't dripping okay. down. I was like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's yeah. silicone. Yeah, we're both pretty tired. Um, I think just the whole week of crushing it every day. And then Saturday launch and then yesterday, as you can see, kind of <laughs> looks like a different boat, right? Minus all the pillows. <laughs> yeah, we just had a little fruit leak from this offender. <laughs> Um, onto the cushion and now the cushion covers off and we gotta wash it again and I've decided I can't deal with this anymore um, which is you know it's a long time coming so I think we might be moving this thing out to the cockpit now that we have all this space because we have a lot of fruit explosions um, that well I've done a really good job of cleaning the cushion but it often leaks down but yeah so um, the boat is livable again and this crap down here is just because we're going to Arizona tomorrow uh, so we have like stuff packed and then I mean there's it's not perfect like we've got a bunch of stuff in here that is here because of the fuel tank project that's not done yet um, so we still have yeah even this stuff too because sail yeah, locker a lot like, of this stuff is our primary sail locker is totally is emptied right now so we could get access to the fuel tank underneath the cockpit and then all the storage under the bed is empty because the fuel tank's going up there too so we're kind of in flux of projects uh yeah we have the day once we get in to sort all that stuff out again like dock lines hooking everything up all the stuff that goes down whenever you get to a new uh, marina and then early tomorrow morning we're gonna go back up to phoenix underneath all the the cynicism is actually quite a lot of excitement. It's just, I think from the first time not going well, it's we're a nervous. little bit nervous, yeah. but yeah, once we get over there, you gotta actually go out and get champagne. <laughs> Oh, it's pretty good. Oh, thank God. I was like too scared to walk it, over there. It does take a little bit of time. It said let it sit for a little bit. Okay. Because the engine started though. Yep. So it's been a few minutes. That's okay. Okay, let's get the engine started. Yeah. Oh, there you go. There it goes. My hands are shaking a little bit. Yeah. Oh man, too much coffee, but. All the fish jumping. This feels so great to be on the water. Oh my god! 
You know how I said yesterday we're like being on the heart is like almost like being in the water? Yeah. Totally false. <laughs> totally different. <laughs> totally false. This is, this is amazing. Feels weird, huh? <laughs> My God, we're in nature again. Look at all the fish. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen a more beautiful sight in my life. Everything looks beautiful right now. Bigger go home here and uh, <laughs> yeah. Bill's gonna... <laughs> Dock the boat backwards. So yeah. That's not I am the disaster, but it'll be good content. <laughs> nah, I'm not in there. Shit. He's having trouble. Okay. Un poquito. Yeah, I just wanna... Let me just, let me just get a, more, a little more speed. She's not coming around for some reason. It's a little disturbing, eh? Do you think that has something to do with their cables? Nah. Nah, everything's fine. I can feel me hitting the stops. I'm just gonna do this. Get some speed this time. Yeah. I need water flow. Our prop is offset. Our prop is... <laughs> we did it. We did it. The engine was overheating, I don't know why, but that's another problem. Yeah. And I confirmed with the IR gun that it's actually overheating. Well, it was overheating Wait, nine minutes. months ago, so. I thought, yeah. Not shocking. Whatever. Not like a test. I couldn't really test that. I didn't know out of the water, so. Yeah. Holy crap. Time for a beer. <laughs> 10 o'clock now. I can't believe that. It, like, that, I feel like time just stood still. So you enjoyed a little moment on the water there, huh? Yeah, it was amazing. Like a fish jumping and I peaceful. I feel bad that you couldn't experience it, though. It's coming for me. Well, you can see what I filmed. <laughs> we have our new sunshades up. Well, it's behind. We have one sunshade up because the sun's coming from over there. And I don't think we'd be sitting in this cockpit right now if we hadn't done all, all that work. work yeah. Because the cushions are comfortable, <laughs> the table's finished, and we actually have... Honestly, I think it's a pretty nice view. I might not have thought that nine months ago, but... It's the water. It, it, yeah. <laughs> or waterfront. Sparkling, and it's a beautiful temperature, and there's little fishies jumping, and very happy. That's all we can ask for right now. Exactly. Cheers! Clink! <laughs> <laughs>